Luckily for London's West End, there seems to be no shortage of those cute ragamuffin-style children, seemingly so necessary to a successful musical. For the child labour law, plus the current demand for this particular kind of child labour, means that Oliver, Annie and now Bernardo each employ three alternating companies of these waif-like little performers. It's expensive, but good value at the box office, even though James Smiley as Dr. Bernardo and Fiona Fullerton as Siri are supposed to be the stars of the show. And of course, the real Bernardo did dedicate his life to children, as James Smiley recalls. This all began late one night on my way home from the hospital when I found young Jim Jarvis sleeping on the streets. I just couldn't believe that he had no home to go to. And I quickly discovered that there were many other hundreds of young children, boys and girls, just like Jim, with nowhere to go. My friends didn't believe it could be true. So, one night in 1866, Jim Jarvis took some of my friends to a favorite sleeping place, beside the warmth of the gems. There was Sire, she's now my wife, and Darcy, another doctor from the London Hospital, together with Lord Shaftesbury, their uncle. Something had to be done, and the first thing was to show that somebody cared. Our Father in Heaven, give me the courage and strength to save these poor souls. In the extravagant world of the musical, that could only be a cue for a song. Take it away, Barry. into the Ziegfeld Follows, isn't it? <laughs> you like all that kind of thing, don't you? I love it. I love the world of make-believe. MGM, if I'm not advertising. <clears throat> yes, in fact, you seem to like extravagant things. I mean, for example, you don't exactly stint on sentimentality in this show, do you? Um, I wouldn't call it sentimentality. Um, sentimentality, to me, has a feeling of slush about it. It's emotional. And emotional has a kind of realism about it. And this show is real. Remember, it's based on a true story. A large amount of cash does seem to have been put into the stage portrayal of poverty-stricken London. Press a button and everything in sight seems to lift, turn or drop into place. As I watched the operation, I kept worrying stage manager Richard Andrews would cue the wrong button and everything would lift, turn and drop into pieces. But it didn't. Now you say it's based on a real story, but how much is it really based on a real story? A lot of it is. A lot of it is real. But when you're entertaining the public, you have to put a little icing on the cake. So you do muck around with it a bit? A little bit, yes. I have to. But without changing the character of Bernardo himself or his wife. I have a favourite song, actually. It's one of the songs that the children sing when they're going to bed at night. I think that's my favourite one. It was the first one I actually wrote for the show. Thank you. 
was written by a computer. You feed it, you see, with all the relevant information. London's three big musicals all feature charming little children singing their hearts out. Oliver, Annie, and the King and I. So if you double the children, take out the baddies, and add some impressive sets, you can't lose, can you? Oh, yes, you can. Bernardo is quite unbelievably awful. And it shouldn't be. It stars the stunningly pretty Fiona Fullerton and the nearly as pretty James Smiley and is based, of course, on the good Irish doctor who devoted his life to helping the poor and homeless boys and girls of London town. The poor and homeless boys and girls of London town would have stolen the show had there been a show to steal, but even they were battling valiantly against insurmountable odds, including tiddly-um-pom-pom -pom tunes that vaguely kept reminding you of something else and choreography that went out with Choo Chin Chow. Frankly, by the end of the first act, I felt that if another lovable East End character with cold hands, warm heart and dirty feet was introduced, I'd throw up. But the worst mistake of all, the unforgivable mistake, was that Bernardo has no baddie. There is no villain to hiss and boo, no Fagin to hate and fear. Musicals with no baddies are bad musicals. Just